I was born and raised in Southern California. Which is why I saw my California tan. And uh, some of you got that. And uh, my other hometown was Indianapolis, Indiana. And I've been walking with the Lord since I was six years old. I'm also a recording artist. Esmu arī mūziķis ar saviem albumiem. And in fact, at the back table, there are two recent CDs that came out. Patiesībā uz galdību tur aizmugurēja divi nesenī kompaktiski. That uh, Beasters produced for me. Ko producēja Beasters. And uh, been on, actually, on uh, Laughing Radio as well. Patiesībā man spēlē arī Latviešu radio stacijās. And been blessed to be on radio and TV all over the world. Un man ir bijusi tā svētība būt arī visā pasaulē, radio un televīzijā. And wrote a book about living with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. How many know what ADHD is? One person, two person. Okay? It's, it's when you are just, just constantly on the move. The three signs of ADHD. Your attention span shorter than an inch on the ruler. In the shorter one. Than an inch on the ruler. I don't know. You guys use measures. Measure the inch. Yeah. Uh, that those uh, yes, they not right. Uh, Usman is being a little bit more than a centimeter. You are hyper. To is a hyper. You just. I mean, you you can be tied down to the chair and you're still moving. You yeah, know. Yeah, but uh, this is because I'm very not to that was. And you are very impulsive. And to is a little impulsive. You don't. Think before you act, you act first. And then you think when you're in trouble. So, so I was uh, glad that we finally got my book translated into Latvian. Anyway, I wanted to share with you a few songs. How many of you have ever been in a place in your life where you're not sure which way to go. You're not sure what decision to make. You, you, you're like, do I do this or do I do that? Because whatever decision you make, you have to live with the, with the consequences of that choice. And I call that place in the middle is like you're caught in the middle. Do I do this or I do, do I do that? And so that's what the song's about.
inside your heart is there a tug of war? Do you find yourself? Do you find yourself caught in the middle? Do you find yourself? Do you find yourself caught in the middle? In America, there is a, a day that I really hate. Now, I, I notice you also have the same day here, but it doesn't seem like a big thing here. But in America, before this day happens, there are commercials and advertisements that remind you that this particular day is coming. And if you're single, you hate this day. You wish it didn't exist. Besides tax day, what could it be? Valentine's. Now, again, here in Latvia, I haven't seen the commercials for Valentine's. But if you go to America, for three weeks, they're pushing Valentine's Day. All the commercials are mushy. You know, you find your first love. You find your lost love. You fall back in love. It's love, 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 love. You know? Even puppies find love. You know? <laughs> you know? But when you're single, you're like, ugh. I mean, it's like, really? Don't they have a day for us? <laughs> so I was thinking about this, and I kind of wrote a little song about being single <laughs> on Valentine's. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have the words translated in Latvian. So I, but uh, I'll sing it in English. And maybe Anessa will give you a little kind of sur uh, synopsis of the song about. But you have a part in it. You have a part in the song. This is your part. What about me, oh Lord? Ready? What about me, oh Lord? See, I'm in a good room. We're all single. <laughs> One more time, ready? And you want to do with this hug, this pity look, okay? <laughs> Here we go ahead. Oh, I love it. Oh, I got chills in my body now. got Okay, I'll let you know when we come in. It's like you can tell. Well, I'm not going to Make sure I've been tuned. Valentine's is the day that single people dread. Cards and gifts, they are everywhere. Love fills the air. As sweet as to the good you go, well, this isn't fair. To be alone and single on Valentine's. Here we go. Couple say on Valentine's while well, I get stuck with a kitty cat who's just meowing the blues. Cause on this day she gets the press, she's single too.
tide I've seen go still as time flies by Who will be my valentine? Walk alone For Jesus Christ He gave His life and He loves me so He forgives me, receives me And calls me His own Jesus is our one true friend Forever He is our companion We are His and He And in America, in America, they have movies that we call chick flicks. You know what those are? <laughs> These mushy romantic movies for girls. <laughs> <laughs> and the one movie I'll never forget <laughs> is Jerry Maguire. At the end of the movie, with tears in his eyes, Tom Cruise tells Rene Zingmuger, You complete me. And that's what society says. It says, you are not a full adult unless you're with somebody. How many have heard the term I found my better half? One person. It's yeah. It's the term that I'm not completed unless I'm with someone. Let me encourage you, you find your completeness first in Jesus Christ. So five principles I want to share with you. First principle, number one. I need to have another aim in life besides marriage. How many are in your early 20s, 20s? Teenage, late teenagers, okay. 30s, 40s, just me, wow. <laughs> okay, all right. The one thing I notice when you're young, you start planning your life out. Now, from my understanding, girls, you start thinking this way. By this age, I'll date someone. By this age, I will be engaged with this person. By this age, we'll be married. And by this age, we'll start the family. The trouble is, girls, life doesn't always work that way. A lot of single adults who have never been married before, that group has grown, has grown a lot. Because most people are not getting married now or in the 20s or even the 
Jesus. Jo tagad cilvēki, kam ir 20 ar kaut ko, un pat pāri 30 neprecās. Some are putting off marriage for either college or careers. Daudz arī laulīgu atlieku, koledžas vai karjeras dēļ. Or maybe because of the family life they've experienced. Vai arī tās pieredzes dēļ, kas ir bijusi viņu ģimenē. They thought, I don't want to get married only to get divorced. Viņi domā, es negribu apracēties tikai, lai pēc tam izšķirtos. So then, what other goals do you have? Un tad, kāda tad vēl jums ir mērķi? It's been said that when a girl sees a guy, and they really like him, in their mind, they already plan out the wedding. Now, guys, we're different. We don't tell you girls how we feel. But as a guy, if I see a girl, even at my old age, I already planned out the wedding. <laughs> but society puts a lot of pressure on us. They say, well, you need to find someone. At least date someone. And sometimes the church puts pressure on us. I don't know how many times in church people would call me scripture. The Bible says, David, he who finds a wife finds favor with the Lord. No wife. Am I out of favor with the Lord? And then sometimes we put the pressure on ourselves. Well, surely by 21 I'm dating. Surely by 23 I'm engaged. Surely at my 25 I'm married. I'm 47. <laughs> Boy, am I late. <laughs> and I realized, you know, I can't put this pressure on me anymore. Because it just, it, it just is unhealthy. And I also know that sometimes, don't you feel out of place when you're around couples? There's a saying. Two's company, three's a crowd. And you know, my friends that were dating or got married, they would invite me to join them. So let's face it, it felt awkward. Because it was, used to be just my friend and I. Now it's my friend and her. <laughs> and it's like, la la la, oh, la la la. <laughs> you feel awkward. And I noticed when my friends got married, the friendship kind of changed. At first I thought it was me. Because I thought, gee, they kind of look down on me now. They kind of treat me differently. Then I asked my other single friends. And we came to the same conclusion. That sometimes when our friends get married, it's like they look down on us. You're single. But we're real adults. It was like they went promoted from the back of the plane to first class. Now we're on the same plane, but they ain't coming back to our area. And unless we're married, we're not going into their area. So, first of all, we need to have another aim in life besides marriage. You need to first learn to enjoy being adults. How do you remember when you were small? You're too young, you can't do that! Now what I'm hearing, you're too old, you can't be doing that! You know, when we, when you're in your late teens, early twenties, life is exciting. Now, I call my twenties the turbulent years. Because half of you still got a kidness, something kiddish about you. Because now you can live on your own. 
No mom or dad. No mom You can sleep as late as you want. Stay up as late as you want. Watch TV as late as you want. But at the same time, society expects you to be an adult. They expect you to show up at your work on time. You are to be responsible. And mommy and daddy no longer pays for your food. <laughs> or your apartment or home. So it's this turbulent time. Because let's face it. In your 20s, you're just wild. It's like letting a horse out of a stall. I'm 20! Zoom! You know. <laughs> and you do whatever you want until the consequences begin to hit you. So I've learned, okay, in my 20s, I need to first embrace life. But then you reach your 30s. And now you're in a transition. Because in your 30s, you kind of begin your careers. You kind of have an idea of where you're going in life. And of course, in your 40s, you're kind of set. And to change is a little bit hard. But I try as much to be flexible and not become old and just terrible. But this is essential. I mean, I, I I remember growing up, I always hated not hated. I just like old people. Because they were just set in the ways. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, now do it that way. <laughs> and now I find my and I remember. I, growing up, my music was loud. And I remember old people, that's too loud, turn it down. <laughs> and it's like, and I remember old people, that's too loud, turn it down. I listen to your music. I'm like, oh no, I'm becoming old. That's too loud, turn it down. So, as a single adult, what were things you wanted to do when you were younger? Because could you do some of these things if you were married? When I realized that I was not getting married in my 20s, I decided, well, I need to embrace my singleness and see what I can do with it. When I was younger, I always believed and dreamed that I was going to be a singer and travel over the world. And as a single adult, that gave me the freedom and the liberty to do, to do that. Or I think if I was married, it would have been really hard to be gone and then try to raise a family at the same time. So what are things that you wanted to do when you were really young but you couldn't do that maybe you now can do? And then enjoy the privileges of being an adult. But then also remember you have responsibility as well. You're able to now contribute back to society. You're able to do things for society you couldn't do when you're a small child. And then enjoy the passage that life brings. As I got older, I realized, well, I may not get married. Because my goal was, well, when I get married, then I'll buy a new car, then I'll buy a new house. Or buy new furniture. Well, as I reached 28, 29, I thought, well, how long am I going to wait? And I realized I need to just take charge of my life now. So as an adult, I began to invest things that I would enjoy as an adult. And I also began to enjoy that as an adult, I could dress differently now, too. You know, for those who are in the 20, you guys dress real cool and hip. 
Now, I think it would look funny on me if I tried to dress the same way you did. Now, I could, because people don't believe my age anyway. Yeah. But um, but I would look funny with baggy pants. But it's crazy to think was the guy that comes. Yeah, big sam, and not just because he was wearing sam. And then boots of clothes. The other thing you should think about now. Well, then we have to put your foot down on that. Is investing in your future. If if you go with someone like that. See, many married couples begin to uh, invest together for the future. But as I begin to realize I wasn't getting married in my 20s and early 30s, I should be thinking about my future in retirement. Because, well, at least in America, uh, our pension might not be there when I finally do retire. And then I should learn to save money and put money on the side. So I can just go on a vacation. Sometimes you just need to put money aside for just for just a fun day. Or for new clothes. Or a night on the town with friends. The other thing I had to learn was to deal with my sexuality. We live in a society that bombards you with sex on radio and television. I mean, music. The songs when I was growing up, they were cleaner. The songs had what they call innuendos. Into what? Uh, secret messages. This not be that upsets babies. When the adults heard them, and get the people shake that did they? They thought, oh, what a nice song. And go my way, cut your teeth. But when as kids heard them, and get the next band that did they? The words had a whole different meaning. That they were not be some secret music. Now, the songs don't have any hidden meanings. They tell you exactly what they're doing in bed. It, it blows my mind how, how sad the songs have gotten. Rappers degrading women. Yeah, she is my blink, blink, blink. You know, or the woman. They're doing it back to the, to the guys. But you see this, because they're back vocal, push it. Yeah, hit my junk, 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 you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, dear, see. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. And then the videos. And the video clip. Okay, when I was a young person. Yeah, let's be young ladies. The music videos. Music video. Was about music. Yeah, for music. Now, it's porn. Am I not telling the truth? Like that now? Yeah? Okay. I mean, get this. I'll hear a song on the radio. And the song is nice. Then I see the video. I don't like, what? What does the song have to do with what they're doing? I'm here, here, I'm going to give an example. I'm going to make up a song. My grandmother makes apple pie. Yum, 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 yum. Then I see the video. Then I see the video clip. My grandmother makes apple pie. Yum, 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 yum. I'm really shocked that little kids now know more about sex than I did when I was in fourth class. To be in some of these schools and to hear what the kids are saying and how they refer to each other and know what sexual acts to do already greatly alarms me. 
In America, America, they have did a statistics that 11-year-olds are already engaging in sexual activity. That would be like your little brother and sisters. The other thing I want to share about sexual uh, sexuality is that we are under this assumption if it feels good, you do it. The thing is, God did make sex. But he made it for marriage. And there's a reason why he made it for marriage. Sex is both a physical and a spiritual and emotional connection. Let's take all the Anandria. Aldi and Andrea. Aldi and Andrea. Aldi and Andrea? Yeah. Aldi and Andrea, they like each other. Aldi and Andrea, they like each other. Okay. They get together. And then they say it, Papa. They start dating. Then he holds his hand. Okay. Then they hold hands on. And then they're also Christians. And then they kiss. And then they kiss. Okay. <laughs> but then they kiss a little bit longer. But then Pascal starts to have yoga. And longer. Or yoga. And soon the hands begin to wander. When you have that rotting sex tiger. Oh, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. Okay. That's, and then they've been dating for a long time. And then they have been dating for a long time. And they have been dating for a long time. And they begin to physically get more and more. Well, we, we'll do this, but we won't do that. But we really do love each other. But, but we won't do that, because that's the final act. But we'll still do this. It's okay. It's not really sex. And before you know it, Aldis and Andrea become one and the same. When you engage in sexual activity with another person, your emotions are stirred. Not only physically are you uh, physically uh, connected, but emotionally and spiritually you, you, you are connected. There is one thing you can only give once. That was meant to be given to your life partner. That's your that's your virgin virginity. virginity. Because once you give it away, you can't give it away another time. When you become one with this person, your heart, your body, your minds, they are like one. But, you see, but that was reserved for a man and a wife. Because a man and a wife are supposed to stay together for life. But our society says, well, if you love the person, do it. Or society says, hey, friends with benefits. I have friends, if you need a quick little fix, just go to a friend and they'll take care of you. Because you're friends. You understand each other's needs. And even if it was a quick fling, there's still emotions involved. So what happens when the fling ends? Or your relationship ends? See, Aldous and Andrea are not married. And finally the guilt really gets to them. Because they are Christians. And they realize that God said, no, this is wrong. I cannot bless this. See, the Bible says in Hebrews 13 that God blesses the married bed. Do you think he'll bless us? I'm including myself in this. 
Vai jūs domājat, viņš redīs mūsu un es arī sevi tajā visā pieskaitīju? Ja mēs esam seksuāli aktīvi ar cilvēku, ar ko neesam precējuši? Es runāju pats no savas pieredzes. Jūs bijuši tādu laiku, kad esmu ticējis vienā lietā, bet izturējies pretējies. Tāpēc es nekad nerādīšu ar pirkstiem un skatu no jums, un nepaldies jūs, es netiesāšu. Es runāju pats no savas pieredzes. Ja es jebkad apprecēšos, es nekad nevarēšu vairs atdot sievai savu jaunu līdzi. A relationship ends outside of marriage. Um, that day is that that it seems because now all of us. They're never the same. Um, that when you first make that you go start bash. You're never the same. To first never go start bash. You see, if you begin to become sexually active. Ready to test that the sexual active that day. If you're a Christian. You do experience that. You're going to feel remorse. Do you taste no jail? Conviction. Uh, the violence has to be guilt. Why is that thing? And the other thing too is, you're going to begin to compare with another person. If you begin to sleep around, I'm going to be very blunt with you. All of a sudden, it loses the, the beautifulness that God meant. And all of a sudden, you begin to compare with another, with the other person. Well, you don't hold me like this person. Well, you don't respond like that person. Again, it was meant just for one person. Your husband and wife. God will bless the married dad, like I said. There's a reason why he says, wait. Until marriage. Because then there is no guilt. No remorse. And the beauty of it, of the beauty of it, you can enjoy without feeling luck. But let's say you have a you stumble in this area. And maybe some of you are involved right now. There is forgiveness in Christ. I've learned to say, I promise, I've learned to say not to say this. I promise, Lord, never to do this again. When most likely I'm setting myself up for another fall. Instead, I learned to say, I promise not to stop pursuing holiness. And to keep following after you the best I can. Okay, last two points. You need to get involved with your local church. Your church family is going to be the best place to keep you healthy, spiritually, and be a great support. Being a single adult through my 30s and 40s, my local church helped me meet the emotional needs that I would have. I have a lot of moms and dads in the church. And learn how to serve in the church. See, as a single adult, I've been able to give back to the Lord. Without worrying about the kids or whatever. And the Lord has used me in so many powerful ways as a single adult. Last point. Build healthy relationships. As single adults, we need these relationships. My friendships have pretty much kept me sane. During the holidays, when couples get together, <laughs> because they became like family for me. But learn to pick the right friendships. You see, who you hang out with is how you're going to act like. Hang with good people, you'll be fine. 
Ar jūs viss būs kārtībā. Hang with the wrong crowd. Ja būsiet ar nepareizo pāri, it will start showing up in your life. Tas arī jūsu dzīvē sāks demonstrēties. And again, I speak from experience. Un jau atkal es runāju pats no savas pieredzes. Also, be aware if you find yourself going into a codependent relationship. Un arī baturiet prātā, esiet uzmanīgi, vai jūs neiesies tādies līdzatkarības attiecībās. Which could lead to emotional abuse. Kas var nomirst pie emocionālas vardarbības. A codependent person is someone who is a caretaker of someone who has an addiction or a problem. Līdzatkarīgais ir aprūpētais kādam, kuram ir atkarības vai citas problēmas. As a single person, I've always wanted to help people. Un kā cilvēks, kas ir viens, es vienmēr gribētu līdzēt citiem. But there was a situation in my life where in trying to help someone, I got dragged into the problem and got involved into a codependent and emotional abusive relationship, which is very unhealthy. And last point, your relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the most important relationship you will ever have. He, like the last song, he is our one true friend. Many people ask if I'm married. No, I'm not married, sir. But I've worn a ring on this finger since 1986. Symbolizing that I have a relationship with the Lord. And that He is the first love of my life. And I want to honor Him with my life. And even though at times I have failed, at times I have behaved not like the way I believe, I found Him to be faithful. I found him to be faithful. And he's just been gracious to me in the last several years. So, any quick questions?